Have it all for you. In the meantime, back to North this afternoon. All right, if you need to fix a leak under a kitchen sink, you call a plumber. If your car breaks down, you call a mechanic. If you need a college scholarship, you call Sam Lim. He's known as the scholarship guru. Most kids are lucky to get just one scholarship for college. Sam was awarded 18 of them. Has to be some kind of record. Now he helps other students earn scholarships, and he's here to tell us all of his secrets. In fact, you're a junior right now, right? Can be junior. So how did you get all these scholarships? What did you do? I hired my sisters. <laughs> no, I've got three sisters, but they're, they're really great and very supportive. But what I did, I mean, I have no idea. It was just going out there and applying. So pure, how many did you apply for? Over 75. 75. And it was just pure ambition. Um, I had a very strong sense of purpose that I wanted to go to college with no debt. And uh, I went out there, found all the scholarships. My thing, my, my extracurricular activity after school was searching for scholarships. So, like, I mean, how many, <laughs> I, I, I remember applying for those. You have to write essays. Absolutely. You got to get teacher's recommendation. How many uh, essays did you have to write? Uh, well, you know, that's, a, that's the trick, is that when you apply for that many scholarships, you're not writing 75 essays. You're you using just copy and pasting? Sometimes. Uh -huh. But, you know, you get to that point where you know your story so well that you can just crank out an essay. So let's go through some of the most memorable ones. You got okay. a Gates scholarship, right? A Millennium scholarship. Gates Millennium scholarship. That was for what, seventy thousand dollars? Well, it's a value. It's a, it's a varies. So what it does is it pays for anything that's not met by your financial needs. How'd you feel when you got that one? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, my mom freaked out. You know, was very happy. Gave me a big hug. Um, I actually thought it was a, a joke though, because I got really? I got my letter on April first. And I thought, for, this is, there's no way. Yeah, April Fool's Day. I, I got two letters that day, one from another scholarship organization. And I opened that one first. Yeah. Because I was like, that one's just telling me I didn't get it. So I opened that one and I was like, whoa. Wow. Yeah. So. Now, speaking of jokes, you got a math scholarship. You hate math, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do. I, I, I'm not a big fan of math. I was in math club and I would always just doodle at you know, yeah, you did. competitions. And then you got but, a math scholarship. Um, I was a runner up. Wow. I applied for it. It was in my school, and I thought, you know, why not? Give it a shot. Now, you, I didn't know. You, I was going through all the scholarships you applied for. There's a scholarship for concrete? It was uh, the Washington State National or Re Ready to Mix Concrete Scholarship. It was the first year they well, did people it. people are excited about mixing concrete? Is some, that some people are excited about concrete. They like yeah? it. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I applied for it. I didn't get it, but yeah. they sent me a nice poster you know, about all the places you can get concrete in Washington. So, yeah. yeah. Now, you actually, there was a... You had a childhood medical problem, right? Someone yeah. Was, what, what, explain, this helped you, motivate you to do right. this. This, well, is, this was uh, really what shaped how I, how I think today, who yeah. I am today. And it was from third grade. I was born normal, no problems, walking. But what happened in third grade, I sprained an ankle playing basketball. And within a couple of weeks, I began having trouble walking. And it was, uh, I was later diagnosed with a movement disorder called dystonia. So mm -hmm. what happens is when you try to move your muscles, your brain tells all your different muscles to move, and you just get into a... I mean, you get spasms, basically. Right. And so from there, by sixth grade, I was no longer walking. I was using a wheelchair. And from there, it, was until, um, it wasn't until the senior year that I began walking again. And was to, due to three surgeries up to that point, I've had six now, um, but that, that surgery was a brain surgery, and I have a scar on my head that they put electrodes in, put connected with a wire down the side of my neck into a stimulator in my chest. And this is what's helping me to walk today. So I, I'd imagine that cost quite a bit of money. Absolutely. I mean, I think... My parents, my dad basically took me aside beginning of senior year. He had told me in sixth grade because when I first got that wheelchair, my doctor said, you know, if you keep sitting in a chair, you're going to look like a chair. And my dad said, you got a whole future ahead of you. You know, go out and figure out what you want to do. Um, so he said, make a goal for yourself that at your high school graduation, you can walk without a wheelchair, no cane, no crutches. Yeah. And uh, I had that surgery right before senior year, and it was just a magical year where I applied for all these scholarships, ended up winning some, and it, it was amazing. So. That, that really drove me. So to that's apply. what motivated that you to keep going. That was a huge motivator for me to keep applying that. You know, I, I have three sisters. My parents can't pay for all of us to go to school and all right. my medical stuff. And, you know, so it's really just a matter of motivation. What's very, very cool about this, though, is you've gone one step farther. You've helped yourself, but now you're helping others get scholarships. Why, why are you doing that? I think it was just, you know, my senior year is May of 2006. I figured out all this stuff. I, I had it down to a science, you know. I knew the ins and outs. And I thought, what am I doing if I could just keep it in my, in my brain? And I have this tendency, if I had learned something new, I just want to share it with everybody. And so I went out and started a website. It was at first a very simple blog. And mm -hmm. from there, it just grew. And I thought I could give more and more. And just, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's just paying it forward. It's like the sense that if somebody is coming along and they could use my help, I want to help them out. We've got some people you've helped. Michael, Lily, Abdul are in the audience. Michael, how did it help you? What did he do for you? Well, he practically introduced me to my own career center. The buzzword, <laughs> the buzzword that, that resonated with me was that that place was a gold mine. So I took that to heart, applied for probably about over 20 scholarships, and got about a third of them. Good for you. Local ones. 
Yeah, it's it's really rewarding. So just having them helping me out, <clears throat> inspiring. That, that's gotta make you feel good. And let's help some other folks out here. What are key things if somebody's watching this going, all right? I can be like Sam. I want to get a scholarship. Just some key things to think about. Yeah, the first thing, you know, I always, when I do presentations um, for different organizations, I use my three Ps. I call it the three Ps to scholarship success. And it's really about personal power. That's the first thing, is you have to understand who you are. If so you know who you are. Know who you one. are, self-reflection. And then tie it into what you do. So finding your purpose. And the way you find your purpose, I think, is if you do activities. You have to be so very involved. Mike can testify to that. that you have to be very um, active in your community that you're making a difference. If you're sitting home playing video games, probably not going right. to make a difference. Exactly. Yeah. So try to use the time that you have to be, to be useful. And then from there is finding a passion. If you have a sense of purpose and you find an activity that you love, just pursue it with passion. And, you know, I think all those things put together, doing well in school, making sure that you're making, you know, taking advantage of all the resources. The final thing, though, is really... Um, a quote that I always end my presentation with, which is, never underestimate your story or your ability to impact others. And I think it's, we'll end this story on that. Good job, Jim. Thank you. Website's up. Anybody wants to know? We'll be right back.